First thing I do is I say, would you look at this? You know what I mean? Yeah, sure. Welcome plungers. Thanks for pulling up and tapping in as usual. Well, I've got some work done and it's looking really, really good. So first of all, I started breeding the Griffins as promised. This is the offspring of a pair that I had. And truth be told, I lost all the tames that I showed in the last video, all the new tames that I showed in the last video, I lost them. So I currently got this guy breeding with Jill because this was the color scheme that I got out of them and I kind of like it, but I do want to get the darker back that Jill has and just everything else the same from this guy right here. Got a couple of things to show you. Now these dino storage boxes are so cheap to make. And yeah, these are some of the Griffin's colors. This one is really nice also. I might go for that at some point. Let's take her out and show you guys what she looks like. Yeah. That's nice. That's his mother. I also got myself a new spyglass that stays out and you can use it while you're using other things. You can still use your other items, but then you also have spyglass capabilities with the zoom, but it's not it's not vignetted. It's not just a circle in the middle of the screen. It's the whole screen, which is very cool. And it, and this one gives way more information. I don't know what I was thinking with that enhanced spyglass that I was using before. I have no idea what I was thinking. Yeah, I really have no idea what I was thinking. Let me see if I still have it on me. Yeah, I still got it on me. Now look at this thing. Nothing. It just shows you torpidity and health. I mean, I guess it's a good tool when you're taming things, but I'd like to know the information before I start taming. And oh yeah, I got some, uh, some spiders. Let's get that zoom on. There we go. Got some spiders. Now the females are insanely easy to get. I guess I kind of gave away the fact that I got spiders because there's the mashed insects on my hot bar and that's what you use to get the spiders. Now these spiders do some very, very cool things. First of all, there's this craziness right here. What? <laughs> what? This thing just jumped cleared across, across the building. Like, this is definitely going to be my transportation from now on. And then there's that. Just latch onto the wall. Oh, not just the wall. The ceiling. Yeah, it's like that. And then you could just drop. That's so cool. It's got this bite. And then you release pheromones. And I think that's it in the air right there. There they are. I couldn't figure out how to do it before to attract the males. So yeah, that's what I did. So while we're here, let's go see what we bred here. Yeah, this, the females are surprisingly easy to get. You just throw on the shield, walk up to them and just 
feed them the mashed bugs. This one took two feedings and it was quite some time between the first and the second, but it, it tamed up to over 90% with that first feeding of extraordinary kibble. Oh, I'm sorry, mashed bugs. It was mashed bugs. Mashed bugs kibble. So let's see what we got here. Oh, they are breeding heavy. They're, they're going at it. So let's throw this out and see what this thing looks like. Eh, that's not so bad. It's not so bad at all. Let's check out the next one. See, I like that all the information is now on the screen. I don't have to cryo ball the, the thing. Oh, this one's nice. Yeah, the green is getting passed down. This might have a mutation. Let's see. No, it's not there. It's not there. No mutations, but we get we're getting some good colors going. We're getting some some good colors going to mix and match. We'll leave these two to it. Oh yeah, and this right here, yeah, this is my Dinosuchus army. Look at it. Look at it. 26 extremely powerful Dinosuchus. All pretty much like this one right here. Some may be more powerful than this guy. But you saw him in the last video. What we are going to do is I'm going to grab one of these other griffins. Probably the highest level one. So we can, no, actually, I'm not going to grab a griffin. Um, what do I take to get over there? I want to take a flyer. Ketzel. Yeah, let's take a Ketzel. They seem slow, but they're actually quite fast. And I breeded one. Well, I, I trained one with, with speed, with extra speed. So let's get over there because I definitely built what I promised I was going to build over in the Redwoods. It definitely went up. Uh, it hasn't, I haven't put in any utilities. Well, I did put in an elevator, but I haven't put in any utilities other than the elevator. And, um, That's it. But the, the entire structure is built. So yeah, it's that the lightest tree on the highest platform. Yeah, this thing is slow. I mean, I kind of didn't take the Dinosuchus because I wanted to... Yeah, I didn't take the Dinosuchus because I wanted to... Because uh... it's on a raised platform. I didn't want to have to walk through the Redwoods right now. But let's show you the platform. Let's get over there. Hopefully it comes into render distance at some point. I think anything would have been quicker than this. It seems like it's going fast, but I don't know. Are we going fast? Are we really moving? I don't know. Are we 
going to have the stamina to make it. Yeah, we should be all right. We're going to start rendering in any minute now. Any minute now. There we go. It's pretty much just grabbing the tree at the top and the bottom. And I was thinking of connecting them to the other two trees with platforms right there. I am not quite sure about that yet. But yeah, we just have enough stamina to go over here. Let's get him up in there, or her up in there. And yeah, I think I built the tallest elevator in the game. Here's the only utility that I have so far, and that's just to power the elevator. I got to throw in some wooden windows here, but I did try to put windows in all around because like the view is incredible and why not make it a watchtower? So in here, not exactly sure yet what I'm going to put. This might be the workshop after all. But I don't have large dino access to this location, so Quetzal probably couldn't fit on this platform. But yeah, I'm definitely going to time lapse this whole thing. Hang on a second. I didn't do, go too crazy with the greenhouse materials this time. But yeah, this I love the way these ceiling attachments connect. It's beautiful. All of this for some tap, for some sap, some sap taps. Might as well collect while I'm up here. Some veggie cakes that I'm going to make. Get some good herbivores. I gotta go out and get me a Ceratosaurus, actually. I've killed quite a few of them. And, I mean, it's laborious to try to, to tame it, but I've, I've really gotta go do one. Take one of my tankier creatures and just go catch one of them things real quick. And here, here we go. The only way back down. Time lapsed again for your viewing pleasure. My goodness, that had to be a good 90 seconds. I'll put in post how much time it actually was. Are you kidding? The only tame I brought was the Quetzal? I would have thought I would have at least brought a spider with me. But I caught the spider out here, actually. Most of them were just walking around. They were all female, and you could just easily walk right up to them and, and grab them. The dudes, the, the females are aggressive, which is crazy. The males are not. So you could just walk up right, well, I don't know how they behave when you don't have the shield. Because I made sure I had the shield on each time. It, the, the males aren't aggressive. The females are aggressive. But even while they have their aggression, you got the shield up, you can still feed them and tame them. But that high level one that I have, that I was riding back at the base, um, she, wasn't aggressive at all. I fed her and I was able to follow her around until the second feeding. So she was good. But the others, the others were trying to take my head off. They were definitely on aggro. 
on very aggro. But look at this view. Viscerally impactful. Like this, this game embodies pretty much everything I wanted this channel to be about. Immersion, feeling like you're part of the game, feeling like you're actually living in the world and the environment the, the game takes place in. It's, it's what I've been playing video games for, for my entire life. If you're not gonna play them for some form of escape from reality, what are you really playing them for? You know, they're supposed to be immersive. And as time went on, that was the goal of the advancement of technology. Immersiveness, better sound, better graphics, all of that enhances enhances the experience and this game does it and i know a lot of people want to complain it's buggy it's this it's that listen it's a great game they put a lot of content in this game there's a lot of things you can do it's very hard to get bored in this game it's not a one-trick pony be a farmer you can be a hunter you could like you don't have to play play it in a linear way you could actually exist in this world you can express yourself creatively and build you could you could grow an attachment to these tames which is strange it's a digital image on the screen but you could definitely get attached to them. And this, this thing just effortlessly just goes up the wall. Just effortlessly. But aiming on the wall is like going in the direction you want to go is, is weird. But yeah, that's about all I got for today. Thank you guys as usual for pulling up and tapping in and I will see you in the next video and we'll probably just actually, you know, go out, explore the world, see what shenanigans we can get into because truth be told, I am getting better at the game. So it's less embarrassing now to make things happen. So yeah, it is what it is, guys. Thanks for tapping in. Peace.